the honors Dr. John G. Hapal and Dr. Kerry G. Hapal. आपको पता है नॉर्वे एक ऐसा कंट्री है जिसने हर फील्ड में हर फील्ड में अपना लोहा मनवाया पीस एंड प्रॉस्पेरिटी इसका साइन रहा हमेशा इसने अमन की हामी ली और अमन का ख्वाह रहा साइंस की अगर हम बात करते हैं जब हम पास पर नजर उठा के देखते हैं नॉर्वेजियन हिस्ट्री में जब हम नजर डालते हैं वो लाइक टू शेयर समथिंग आई हैव सेड अराउंड मैम मैम सो आवर आई कैन टू नो दैट यू आर कमिंग हेयर इन ओवर कंट्री आई हैव सेच अराउंड अबाउट नॉर्वे एंड आई हैव माय नॉलेज माय माय नॉलेज एनहांस्ड अराउंड थ्रू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस एवं वन कैन ऑब्जर्व द पोजीशन दैट आर साइंटिस्ट एडॉप्ट्स in controversies and in the changes that affect his science. Both in what he cites and the judgments he makes concerning events and people in the past. And also in what he omits or closes over and obviously in the material he chooses he includes. To include. I would like to talk about Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde said that science, success is a science. If you have the conditions, you get the results. If you have the conditions, you get the results. And again, an other Norwegian scientist, Albert Einstein, you, are not, you must be familiar, you are studying his theories, his definitions in your syllabus. But I came to know him close to know right now that he belongs to Norway. Albert Einstein said that two things are infinite. Two things are infinite, the universe and the man. Stupidity, man's stupidity, <laughs> and I really agree with him. With your applause, before this, I would I, I invite Dr. John G. Hamper on the stage. That he come on the stage. I would like to uh, tell you something. He is a person who has delivered lectures in Pakistan before the study group of colleges. He visited Kalyasan University. Istanbul, we visited Kishim College, Lahore, Nyam University, Lahore. Please clap for him. And lastly, in his trip, he chose the standard group of colleges in Southern India. And it's really an honor for us that in this small city, you chose us and you honored us. Kindly come on the stage, Dr. John G. Hamper. Please give him. Thank you very much. We are very pleased to be here. We are very thankful for the welcome we have from you. And as is told, uh, my wife and me, we are coming from the University of Stavanger in Norway. Stavanger is the fourth biggest city in Norway, in the west coast south in the west coast and it's the oil capital of Norway and maybe the oil capital of Europe. We are uh, attended to the University of uh, Stavanger and I am uh, in the science department. I'm a doctor in science in biological chemistry and molecular genetics with genes and proteins and so on. And my wife, she is an historian and it's her projects. Because of her projects we are here and he, she will tell you more about the project and the migration of the Pakistans to Norway and returning and comparing that with the Norwegian immigration to the United States 150 years ago. So I think she will have the whole presentation of the project. And as I said, we are very pleased to be here. We have been to Lahore for a week or so and had some lectures at the universities there. And after this sequence, we will go to Islamabad and stay there for three days and visit the Norwegian embassy there. And we are very pleased to meet all of you. You are very Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, by proceeding, the program, I would like to talk.
share some fun facts about Norway with you. Norway is a uh, kingdom of Norway. Norway is a Nordic narrow country in the northern Europe. Am I right, ma'am? It shares the Scandinavian Pennsylvania with Sweden and Finland. Norway coastlines is famous for its fjords, which are sea inlets. And more, if you want to know about Norway, its capital is Oslo. Am I right, ma'am? Yes, <laughs> A large city, its official language is Norwegian and its official minority, minority language is Romani. Its writing system is Latin. Its writing system is Latin. So you are enjoying or you are smiling? <laughs> Thank you so much. And there are ethnic groups, Norwegian, indigenous status, Jewish and travelers, and Romanis. And its government is unitary, parliamentary, constitutional monarchy. Please clap for Norway. <laughs> as far as we talk about the currency of Norway, it's Norwegian Krone. Do you have you seen anybody have seen Karol? No. Shut the word she has seen. <laughs> yes, ultimately, Norway is a beautiful country, and uh, I think we should go hunting right now. It's uh, a lot about Norway, and uh, kindly give warm welcomes, and uh, I want you to welcome her with your whole heartedness, ma'am, doctor. Carrie Jean Hamble, she is PhD in history and working as an assistant professor in uh, Stavanger University, Norway. Kindly man, come on the stage. Thank you very much for inviting us, or we have invited ourselves, I don't know. But we are here and we are very, very pleased to be here. And the national anthem for Pakistan, we know very well. We have been at Baka border, and that it was a lot of Pakistan's national hymn. Yes. Uh, I have a topic uh, that um, is my research. It is about migration and integration and the impact of religion in the processes. And my PhD in history is about Norwegians going to America. That was a long time ago, um, 150 years ago. But very many Norwegians went to America. Uh, and when they went there, they settled down and they built their churches in America. They built very many churches. 6,500 churches they built. And the people that went to America from Norway, that was 850,000 people. Understand that figure. In 1800, Norway was about 1 million inhabitants. In 1900, Norway was about 2 million inhabitants. And in that space, 850 Norwegians left Norway for America. Uh, it's a very big thing, and it said that uh, regarding to Norwegian history, there has been nothing with such an impact in Norwegian history as the migration and the black death in uh, 1350. Even World War II didn't have that impact on Norwegian history. Generally, migration is no longer viewed as a sign of crisis, as a phenomenon exclusive to the industrial period, 
as an element of modernization, trans transition, or as a typical Western occurrence. The, the new paradigm teaches us that migration is a part of the general human pattern, essential for functioning of families and crucial to the operation to the labor market. And for Norwegian historians, migration is even more important than for, than for European historians. As I said, almost half of the Norwegian population left during the 19th century. And about religion, does religion have something to do with migration? Yes, it has, because with migration follows religion. Religious plurality has become a global phenomenon, writes the American sociologist Peter Berger. The new thing is not the phenomenon, he says, but that the phenomenon is global. People migrate and with them their religious or non-religious convictions, as for Norwegians in America and Pakistanis in Norway. And there can be many reasons to migrate. You can migrate because you are being persecuted for religious causes, or the migration can be just like a pilgrimage. I will not talk about that. Uh, that is not my subject. But from Norway, actually, the first to leave Norway, they were persecuted. That was the Quakers that left Norway in 1825. Um, I think I take a little bit more. Yeah, yeah but just wait a little, little, little bit. Looking at Norwegians going to America and Pakistanis coming to Norway, that is very, very different. If I were uh, just a social scientist, I don't think I could do that, but historians can do so, because they do not generalize. We look at the spe special examples, and we use theory and find a red thread, and do not hope to generalize. We look at the examples and try to uh, understand the context. He says that the Norwegian Pakistanis have taken a bridge building road between Norway and Pakistan, and they have given Pakistan a central place in the Norwegian interest map. At the same time, Norwegian Pakistanis have also made themselves prevalent in Norway. The Pakistani recipe has been a mixture of proper organization, their access to important social arenas where policy is discussed and shaped. Although Norwegian Pakistanis appear to support various political parties and groups, both in Norway and in Pakistan, they have become an important factor of power, both at the national and even more so at the regional level in Norway. They have built their mosques, uh, they have do that voluntarily, but they have also been supported from the government. Every religion in Norway has support from the government economically. Uh, if you are organized, uh, the organization will uh, send something to the government and they go pay back. And what we see about uh, Muslims in Norway the, uh, is that they are very bold, they are very open religious. Very many Norwegians dare not to be open religious because religion is about the private in Norway. That is a part of the secular country. We are a secular country with strong, strong Christian traditions. But, uh, but uh, religion is about privacy. But we see uh, Muslims that are not private religious, they are really, uh, showing 
the religion, so perhaps that is something that will affect the Christians in Norway as well. And I think back again.